Good day, everyone. We want to welcome you to our morning service today, and we're so thankful that by way of social media, we're able to make contact with each other, and so if you've not already done so, we want to encourage you to get your family together and to grab your Bibles, and we're just going to spend some time together worshiping the Lord together. This time, our assistant pastor, Tim, is going to come and lead us in a song, so let's join our hearts together in worshiping the Lord. All right, good morning, church family. If you are there at the house, I encourage you to stand, and we're going to sing our theme chorus. Let's think, sing it through twice together, all right? Our theme co chorus. For the faith of the gospel, together we'll strive. For the faith of the gospel, for the rest of our lives, let us give of our best and in confidence rest. Good work he's begun. Faithful servants will be until his face we see. For the faith in this race we will run. For the faith of the gospel together we'll strive. For the faith of the gospel for the rest of our lives. Let us give of our best and in confidence rest. Complete the good work he's begun. Faithful servant will be until his face we see, for the faith in this race we will run. Amen. Thank you, Tim, for reminding us of our theme chorus for this year. And by the way, our theme, as you know, church family, is refocus. Our theme verses are Hebrews chapter 12. Verses 1 through 4, and let me challenge you, it, uh, you may have some extra time on your hands right now. It'll be a good time to memorize those four verses, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. And our theme is on refocus, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Boy, when we chose that theme for this year, little did we know what we would be uh, facing during these times, looking unto Jesus. Would you join me now? as we look unto Jesus in prayer. Father, we truly bow our heads today and hopefully bow our hearts before you and humbly acknowledging how dependent we are, O oh God, upon your grace and your mercy, individually, as families, as a church family, and O oh God, as a nation especially. Lord, we do pray for our president today Lord, I personally cannot imagine, I'm sure none of us can, the pressure that he must be under in seeking God wisdom. Uh, and Lord, we truly believe that he truly desires to do what's best for our nation. And God, we thank you for those you've brought around him to give him advice and counsel and wisdom. And God, some very important decisions are going to have to be made soon as far as our nation, the health of our nation, and also the economy. And God, we look to you. We know that you have ordained government, and we want certainly, Lord, to obey every ordinance as much as possible. And God, so we pray that you'll give our leaders wisdom in these coming days to make the right decisions. And then God, give us wisdom as we as a church family, uh, need to know from day to day and week to week what to do, and then as individuals in, in our own families. And so, God, we do pray. We commit this entire situation to you, and we, God, we know you have the answers. We pray, God, for those that are sick today, that you'll touch their bodies and encourage their hearts. We know we have families in our church, Lord, that have lost loved ones recently, and we certainly lift them up to you in prayer and pray that you'll comfort them during these difficult times. And Lord, again, we just look to you. We pray that these few minutes together, Lord, you'll use them to strengthen our faith, encourage our hearts. May Jesus Christ be uplifted and honored and glorified, and may your perfect will be accomplished. Lord, you promised to honor your word, and as it goes forth in song and through preaching in a little bit, we just pray your hand a blessing to be upon it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. This time Tim's going to come back and let's join our hearts in worshiping the Lord in song. 
All right, church family, we know you don't have the hymn books there, and so we're going to put the words on the screen for you. Let's sing the hymn, This Is My Father's World. Sometimes it seems like there's an awful lot going wrong, but this reminds us that the world we live in is still the Lord's. This is my Father's world, and to my listening, This is our Father's world, and we know that we serve a mighty God, and He is in control, isn't He? Let me just share a couple of announcements with you. Some of you have been uh, contacting us, asking us what to do about your tithes and offerings, and uh, believe me, it's an encouragement to our heart that you are still concerned about uh, the financial needs of the church. My first suggestion would be to just... uh, Lay by in store, that's the Word of God instructs us there in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, uh, to lay by in store, and during these times, uh, God has certainly been good to us as a church, and we are, uh, as of now, able to meet all the financial needs. So my first suggestion would be just to lay by your tithes and offerings in store, and hopefully soon we'll be able to come back together, and we'll just have one great big harvest uh, offering uh, uh, when we're able to come back together. But if you want to mail a check to the church, that's fine. Uh, some of you have already done that. If you want to mail a check, we'll certainly make sure that it gets deposited into the church account. And we also have a PayPal account on our church website, valleybaptistchurchva.org. And if you uh, have a PayPal account, you're certainly welcome. And some of you are doing that. And so there's PayPal. You can mail a check in. Or again, we don't want anyone to feel under pressure during these times. Just feel free to lay it by in store, and hopefully we'll be able to get together soon. Also, we want to remind you, we thank God for these times we're living in for Comfort Care Ministry. And as of right now, the Stride for Life in May is still on schedule. But even if we're not able to physically and literally walk in in the Stride for Life, of course, the goal here is to encourage folk to be in prayer for that ministry and also to uh, raise financial help for them. So we encourage you to get online, register, uh, start uh, getting uh, uh, supporters to to support you during that, and we'll keep each other informed about that also. Uh, As far as our church and future plans, we're just living from day to day, week to week. Uh, We'll keep in touch and as far as our services are concerned, and we certainly encourage you again to keep in touch with us. Uh, If you need us for anything at all, please feel free to contact us, and we're trying our best to stay in touch without touching each other, I guess is another way of putting it, but we appreciate your prayers for us and encouragement, and we're all doing well. We have so much to be thankful for, and we are just appreciate the opportunity today, again, by social media to be able to spend these few minutes together. At this time, we have some special music. We trust the Lord will use it to minister to your heart. And then we're going to look into the Word of God for just a few minutes.
Open your Bibles with me today, if you would, to the book of 1 Peter, the New Testament book of 1 Peter, in chapter 3. While you are turning there in your Bible, 1 Peter chapter 3, I'll call your attention to verse 15. I know we have, on social media and other ways, we have, in one way, and it's a, and it's a good thing, we've been bombarded with different Bible verses and passages and poems and songs and and we, we, we all seem to be doing everything we can do to encourage one another and minister to one another during these times. And that's a good thing. And so we praise the Lord for that. One verse of scripture that just seems to keep coming back to my mind and heart during these times is found in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15, where the Word of God challenges us to sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And I believe one of the reasons that verse of scripture keeps coming back to my mind and heart during these times is because of the subject of hope. Hope. Our hope is in the Lord. Amen. And our hope is in the word of God. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. And would you pray and join with me? Let's ask God to use his word to minister to our hearts. Father, again, we are reminded of one of the many, many promises that you've made to us in your word. And you promise, God, that your word will not go out and return void, but will accomplish the purposes for which you send it forth. And we believe, O oh God, that we have a holy Bible. We believe we have the inspired word of God that holy men of God were used by the Holy Spirit to write. And God, you've preserved it for us. And we have utmost faith and confidence in it. And so, Lord, as we look into your word today, use it to minister to hearts and lives. And we'll thank you and praise you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to, again, call your attention to this verse. But what I've been reminded of this week is I've, again, gone back to this verse and read it and thought about it even for my own uh, life and ministering to myself, I was reminded of the context of the verses surrounding this verse. And by the way, that's a good principle to keep in mind when we read and study our Bibles is not only is to be careful not to take a verse out of the context of the verses around it and not to take that particular verse out of context of all the other verses in the Bible that have to do with that same subject. And the subject of hope is a wonderful subject in the Word of God. And why, my, how, how needed it is in these days in which we're living to be reminded of the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ and the hope that we have in the truth of God. But would you notice that in the context of the verses around that, that the Apostle Peter is reminding us about the subject of loving life and seeing good days. For example, in verse 10, if you'll notice here in 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning with verse 10, the Apostle Peter says, For he that will love life and see good days. Hey, I want to ask you a question this morning. And I'll use this question as the title of the message. Are you having a good day? Are you having a good day? Now, some of you would like to turn me off right now, wouldn't you? If we were in church together, I'd say, now, hey, don't, don't throw a hymn book at me. You'd say, Pastor, what, what a question to ask during these times. Here we are in the midst of a worldwide pandemic. Here we are in the midst of a national crisis. What do you mean, are you having a good day? You know, here at church sometimes, church family, you know, we'll especially on Sunday night or Wednesday night, I'll ask the question, I'll say, hey, how many of you had a good day today? And almost every hand will go up, even if they didn't have a very good day, just been kind to everybody. Almost every hand goes up, yes, I had a good day. And then I'll say something like, hey, how many of you had a great day? I mean, this was just a great day. Not quite as many hands go up, maybe half or more. And then I'll say, how many of you had such a great day today that you had to pinch yourself? To, 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 you thought you were in heaven, you were having such a great day, and you had to pinch yourself, have a little pain to come back to reality. And you know hardly a hand goes up. Maybe one person will raise their hand just having fun together. But you know, I realize that 
I don't recall in the last couple of weeks asking anyone, hey, have you had a good day? Now, we've all asked each other. Some of you have contacted my wife, Judy, and I, and you've asked us, are, are you all doing okay? Uh, do you need anything? Are you all handling everything okay? And we appreciate that and appreciate your prayers and concern for us. And, and we've done the same. But I don't recall in the last two weeks asking anyone, have you had a good day? And, you know, I think the reason for that is we don't mean to, but in our perspective of things, a good day is a trouble-free day, if there is such a thing, you know. In other words, we think a good day is a good day is when all our plans went okay and we accomplished everything we wanted to get accomplished. And there were a few bumps in the road, but basically speaking, hey, everything went okay and that was a good day. Well, you know, some days that I think may have been good days, from God's perspective, may have not been very beneficial and very profitable at all. And it may be that I'll find out in the future, in eternity, that some of my worst days, from my perspective, some of the what I may have thought were the worst days, from God's perspective, may turn out to have been the best days, the best days. And so the Apostle Peter's challenge here is in verse 10 of 1 Peter chapter 3, for he that will love life, and I would hope and pray that going through situations like we're going through now, that would help us to appreciate the gift of physical life, every day of it. But he that will love life and see good days. The word good there implies not a trouble-free day or a problem-free day. There is no such thing. The book of Job teaches us that man's life is a few days and full of trouble. And we know we live in a troubled world. The word, the word good there implies that which is profitable, that which is beneficial. And so I ask you the question today, are you having a good day? Not good in the sense that no trials, no problems, no difficulties. Yeah, that's a foolish way to ask that question in these times in which we're living. But I ask you that question from the perspective, are you having a good day in the sense that you're allowing God to use what you're going through right now individually, what your family's going through, what your church is going through, your nation's going through, to help profit you and benefit you? You know, Peter is actually quoting from the Old Testament scripture. We won't turn to it now, but I challenge you to go back and read Psalm 34. Here's the Apostle Peter. This is amazing to me. I often think about this. Here God's using Peter to give us a portion of the New Testament scripture. He didn't have any New Testament scripture. But these New Testament writers were certainly dependent upon the Old Testament scriptures. And they looked to those scriptures for comfort and strength. And here's Peter, God's using him to give us a portion of the New Testament, and he's quoting from the Old Testament, Psalm 34. I challenge you this week sometime to read that chapter. And he challenges us to love life, to choose to love life, and appreciate life that God's given us, and to see good days. And what's amazing is Peter is writing to believers who are under persecution. As a matter of fact, let me read a couple of these verses. In verse 13, we read, Who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? But, and if you suffer for righteousness, happy are you. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Here's Peter. In verse, now, these Christians were going through persecution. By the way, you know, I've been reminded this past week. We say, what do we do in times like this? How do we handle life every day in such uh, unprecedented times, in such uncertainties from moment to moment? And I've been reminded this week that, you know, a good bit of the world lives like this every day. Many of our brothers and sisters in Christ in other lands and places, <laughs> you're talking about living in times of uncertainty. This is just a way of life for them. And so here we're learning about that here in America. But here the Apostle Peter says in verse 14, said, neither be troubled. So can you imagine that? Here's Peter telling them, hey, don't be troubled about your troubles. Now, that's, you, know, you know, only God could say that and get by with it. 
for me to tell you not to be troubled. And by the way, when he says don't be troubled about your troubles, he's saying don't be full of anxiety and worry. And for us to tell each other that, that you know, that, 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 that's a human impossibility. It's only natural to be troubled about our troubles, to tend to be under stress and worry and full of anxiety. But God can say that to us because God's grace is sufficient to give us wisdom, to give us peace, to give us a calmness that only the Holy Spirit can give us. God has a right to tell us, even command us, not to be troubled about our troubles. Have you read John chapter 14 recently? In John chapter 14, verse 1, Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You believe in God, believe also in me. Wow, how could Jesus ask us to have the same kind of confidence and trust in him that we have in God Almighty? That was a claim to deity. Jesus is claiming there to be deity. John chapter 14, verse 1. And on down in that chapter, John 14, verse 27, Jesus again said, Hey, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Here in this passage in 1 Peter chapter 3, as we think about having a good day from the sense that God can use it to benefit us and profit us. The Apostle Peter gives us some instructions, some divine instructions from God, not just suggestions. Let me share with you. You can go through this passage and pick out some for yourself. Notice some things that Peter challenges us to do. Those believers to whom he was writing were under severe persecution. We're living in some difficult times right now. We need God's wisdom. We need God's help. And we want these to be good days in the sense that they profit us and benefit us. What should we do? Well, first of all, notice here in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. Number one, the apostle Peter challenges us and reminds us and instructs us under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to sanctify the Lord in your heart. To sanctify the Lord in your heart. Verse 15. Now, we could say that that's just another way of saying turn to the Lord or trust in the Lord. As we just quoted from John chapter 14, where Jesus himself instructed us to let not our hearts be troubled, but to trust him, to turn to him, to look to him. Again, our theme this year, taken from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 4, looking into Jesus Look into God. Oh, you can read the Psalms. You can read through the Word of God. And how many times do you find uh, the wonderful men and women of God found in the Bible who, who acknowledge they, they have trouble, they're going through life experiences, and they're humble and they cry out to God for help. They turn to the Lord. So when Peter says, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, he could be reminding us to just simply, hey, it's time to turn to the Lord and trust Him. But that word sanctify is an interesting word, and you know this, church family. The word sanctify simply means to set something apart. It's, it's considered something that's holy and set apart for the glory of God. And I believe what Peter is saying there to these believers in his day who were going through severe persecution and what a challenge to my heart and your heart today, church family, that within our hearts we acknowledge the truth about Jesus Christ. That we set him apart as the holy one that he really is. And by the way, to acknowledge him as Lord. Not just as one who can forgive us of our sins and take us to heaven one day as wonderful and glorious as that is but in our hearts to acknowledge that he is truly who he claimed to be, the eternal son of God, deity. He never had a beginning. He'll never have an end. And he's the holy son of God. And, he, and to acknowledge him and accept him as the Lord of our life. He's the one we really need to be looking to in these times, isn't it? Many believe that Peter is actually quoting here from the Old Testament book of Isaiah. We've already mentioned that Peter is quoting there in one place from Psalm 34. And here when he challenges to sanctify the Lord in our heart, he may actually be quoting from Isaiah chapter 8. And if you have your Bible there, you can turn there. If not, just listen carefully and you can turn to it later. In Isaiah chapter 8 verse 13 we find these words, Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread and he shall be a sanctuary. 
Wow, let me just take a minute and share what's happening here in, in, in the Old Testament book of Isaiah chapter 8. Ahaz is the king of southern Judah. Northern Israel has united with Syria, and they're basically threatening the southern kingdom of Judah to come for an invasion. At the same time, Ahaz, king of Judah, is not only concerned about Israel and Samaria, Samaria, uh, Syria here, but now Ahaz is also concerned about the Assyrians. And so he's, you talk about a time of crisis. He's got decisions to make. Who's he going to surrender to? Who's he going to yoke up with? Who's he going to depend on for help? And God sends Isaiah, the prophet, a message. Here in Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 11, and Isaiah says in Isaiah 8 verse 11, For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand, and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of the people, saying, Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom the people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid, but sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread, and he shall be for a sanctuary. Now, some believe that this was God's challenge to Isaiah the prophet. Isaiah, what should you do as a believer? What should you do as the prophet of God in times like this? Whatever Ahaz does, whatever these ungodly, wicked people do, you turn to the Lord in your heart. Sanctify the Lord. Put the Lord first place, and he shall be a sanctuary and a dwelling place for you. Others believe it's God's challenge to Ahaz himself, King Ahaz. But whoever that prophet challenge was given to it's the benefit of it is for all of us oh that God would move upon the hearts of our national leaders today and our state leaders and our local leaders and all of us and realize during these times oh let's look unto the Lord Peter says going back to first Peter chapter 3 if we want to have good days from God's perspective and see how God can even use the the most serious trials and burdens of life to benefit and profit us spiritually in every other way. If you want to see how God can turn the worst day into the best day, let's sanctify the Lord in our hearts. Our hope is truly in the Lord and in the truth of his word. Notice the second thing he challenges to do in this verse, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 is not only to sanctify the Lord God in our hearts, but to be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you. Wow. <laughs> you know, the first thing he challenges to do there is to sanctify, acknowledge the Lord, turn to the Lord, sanctify the Lord in your hearts. But number two, to be eager to share the Lord with others. We have the greatest message of good news this world's ever heard, and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news that Jesus died on that old rugged cross, was buried, and rose again the third day. We celebrate all that all year long, but especially the Easter season that's coming up just in a few days. Notice in this verse again, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, that Peter said, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready, be ready always. That word ready there implies eagerness, earnestness, sincerity. Wow, if our hearts have ever been burdened to share the gospel with people around us, it ought to be the times we're living in. People's hearts are prone to be full of fear, worry, anxiety. We just happen to be as a, as a whole world and nation to be living in these times. All of us are prone to be overtaken by those emotions but especially those who really don't know the Word of God, who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, and don't know the promises of God. And so Peter says, hey, you want to have a, you want to have, you want to love life and really let your life, the days of your life be good and profitable and beneficial from God's perspective? Wow. Then be burdened, be ready, be eager, be sincere to give an answer, to give an answer to those around you who wonder where's the peace and the hope and the joy that you seem to have in your life and even in times like this come from, <laughs> you can have an opportunity to share the Lord with them. Notice down in verse 18 of this chapter, 1 Peter 3 verse 18, Peter says, For Christ 
also hath once suffered. Believe me, Jesus Christ knows what problems and trials and heartaches and sufferings are all about. He lived here on earth for 33 years approximately. But notice verse 18 of 1 Peter chapter 3 says, For Christ hath also once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Wow, there's the truth of the gospel. Jesus Christ, the just one, the righteous one, the holy one, the only one who never deserved to suffer, suffered for us, the unjust, the ungodly, the wicked, the sinful, the just dying on that old rugged cross in our place. He who knew no sin took our sin upon him, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, that we who had no righteousness, only our old stinking self-righteousness, we who had no righteousness, we had plenty of sin, he took our sin that he might be able to give us his righteousness. Well, that's the good news of the gospel. That's where our hope comes from. It's in the Lord Jesus Christ. For Christ hath also once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. You know, we're talking about hope. The Apostle Paul reminds us in the book of Ephesians that to be in this world without Jesus Christ, you're without God and you're without hope. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. For someone to look at you and say, there's no hope. There's no hope. To me, those are the saddest words you could ever share with someone. But for God to look at someone and say, no hope. Wow. And that's exactly what God says in his word. If you're without Jesus Christ, you're without God. And you're without hope. We need hope in these times, <laughs> and our hope is in the Lord. Sanctify the Lord God in your heart today, folks, if you know him as your Savior. And let's be eager and ready to share this glorious gospel with others. And then a third thing real quick. I want you to notice the Apostle Peter challenges in this passage of Scripture. To love life and see good days, we need to seek God's face. We need to seek God's smile, God's blessings upon us. We need his mercy and grace. Go back with me to verse 10 again. For he that will love life and see good days. Now watch the instructions. Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew or hate evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue or pursue it. Verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Wow. In verse, the latter part of verse 15, when we're challenged to give a reason for the hope that is in us, we're to do it with meekness. That implies humility. And fear, and the word fear there has to do with reverence for God. Verse 16 challenges to live a life by the grace of God where we have a good conscience. And at the end of verse 16 that we have a good conversation or a good behavior in Christ Jesus. What a challenge there to, to be a trophy of display of what the grace of God can do in our hearts and lives as believers. To be a shining light and salt of the world in the times we're living. One of the reasons we're living in troublesome times is because of the wickedness and sin. I'll be truthful with you. As a pastor, as we think of our nation, sometimes I struggle. I struggle. I, I want to pray for God to help us to get over this coronavirus and and, and to, to keep our economy from collapsing. But then I think of all the sin in our land and, and, and how can we ask God to continue to be merciful to us and, and when the truth is we deserve God's judgment. I think about our own state here in Virginia and how many of our leaders down in our capital are spiritually blinded and, and ignore the truth of God and are promoting right here in our own state lifestyles that God's word says is abominable. Here we are going, going to so much effort to spare and save a human life and at the same time we're, we're, we're promoting the murder of little babies in the mother's womb. 
And sometimes I wonder, should we be like Elijah and, and instead of praying for God's blessing, should we, should we pray for God to stop the rain and bring judgment on us, whatever it takes to, to humble us before God? And sometimes I struggle on how to pray. But I know we serve a merciful God and a gracious God. God's been good to America. I believe God will continue to be good to America. But oh, may God challenge us in these times in which we're living to put the Lord first place, to sanctify the Lord, acknowledge Him as Lord of our lives, put Him first place, turn to Him in these times. And God works through people. We need people. We need to pray for our leaders. God ordained government. He ordained the family. He established the local church. But we look to God, but God works through people. We understand that. Let's sanctify the Lord in our hearts. Let's be eager and ready to share the Lord and the message of the gospel with all those around us. That's the only message of hope for this world today. And then by the grace of God, let's take a stand against sin. Let's ask God to help us by his mercy and grace to live holy, godly lives in these times in which we're living. You know, the truth is, we talk about living in times of uncertainty you know, the truth is every day of your life and my life, in a sense, is a day of uncertainty. Even in the best of times, even when we think everything's great, we're living on cloud 19. The Bible reminds us in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 1, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. We don't, the, only, the only promise we have is the breath we're taking right now, a life situations and circumstances can change just like that can't it James chapter 4 and verse 14 in the New Testament says what is your life it is even a vapor it appeareth for a little time and it vanisheth and it's gone like a vapor but Psalms 118 verse 24 reminds us this is the day the Lord hath made we will rejoice and be glad in it this is the day the Lord hath made we will rejoice and be glad in it. Every day of life is a life of uncertainty. Let me ask you a question. Someone said, you're not ready to live until you're ready to die. You're not ready to really live. Peter's challenging us here to love life and to desire to live a life of good days from God's perspective. But you're not ready to live until you're ready to die. And you're not ready to die until you know Jesus Christ is your Savior. And you have that peace and assurance that Jesus Christ died for you on that old rugged cross was buried and rose again. If you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, would you do that today? Would you right now in your heart trust Jesus? And dear brother and sister in Christ, church family, as we challenge each other's heart today, hey, I ask you a question. Are you having a good day? And no matter what your heartaches are, your trials are, your problems are, God can turn it into a good day. If you'll look to him, sanctify the Lord in your heart, share the love of God with others, the message of the gospel, and live a life that's honoring and glorifying to Christ in these times. Would you pray with me? Father, today, may the Holy Spirit take your word, encourage our hearts, strengthen our faith, convict us where we need to be convicted, draw the lost to you that they may be saved, and challenge us in these times, O oh God, these times of trouble and difficulty and uncertainty, to look to you, O oh God, and allow you to use them in our lives for good, for profit, for benefit. And we'll thank you and praise you for all that you do. In Jesus' glorious name we pray. Amen. Again, if we can help you spiritually or any way at all, please contact us. Uh, some way and we'll be glad to do all that we can to help you and church family we invite you to uh to be back with us at 6 p.m tonight 6 p.m tonight for our sunday night service god bless you we'll see you tonight at 6 p.m